The Legend of Gravity, A Tall Basketball Tale by Charlie Palmer. I've heard you young folks talking about who is the best ball player to ever grace the court. Like that King James someone or other. He's not too shabby. But have you ever heard of gravity? No, not gravity, the centri cent centripetal force pulling us to the center of the earth. I'm talking about gravity, the greatest ball player to ever lace up a pair of sneakers. Centrifugal force, net force. Never heard of him? Well, pull up a chair and let me bend your ear for a minute with the legend of gravity. One sunny afternoon in June, the 29th to be exact, Liquid was in the middle of one of his lessons, trying to teach a new move to sky high and left to right. Now, old Liquid was talking, dribbling faster with his mouth than with his ball. He hated to be interrupted, but that's when this lanky, knobby-kneed, kinda awkward new kid strolled onto the playground court. He wore baggy shorts hanging down to his knees. He had waves so tight it would make you seasick. He asked if he might join us for a three-on-three. Three. Liquid, a bit fed up with the audacious interruption, tossed the ball at the new kid. The boy caught it as though it were an intended pass rather than an outright assault. He spun it on his finger, dribbled it between his legs, then proceeded to run circles around left to right, and Liquid and leaped gracefully into the air over sky high. Now, Sky High wasn't called Sky High for nothing. When he jumped, he looked like he should touch the clouds. But this new kid cleared Sky High, flipped the ball behind his own back, threw his legs, and kept going. Everyone stood there for a moment with their, uh, their mouths hanging wide open. When he snapped out of it, Sky High sputtered, He's on my team. Well, since the ball we were playing with belonged to Sky, no one bothered to argue. What's your playground name, man? I asked. I don't have one, said the boy. Everybody needs a street name, said Liquid. They call me Liquid because I'm so smooth. And we call him left to right because you never know where he's going. Why don't we call him Orbit because he jumped into space, said Sky High. Me. No, I got it, I said. He leaped so high that he looked like he was never coming down, like he defied gravity or something. Why don't we call him Gravity? Too Tall Thompson agreed. And that's how Gravity joined our playground team, the Eagles. We had always been good, but we had never won a championship. We thought Gravity would be our missing link. Truth be told, he was often a one-man show. Gravity once jumped so high that we were able to go out for ice cream before he came back down. Ballers from across the city started coming around, trying to challenge Gravity. In one game, he scored 150 points. Oh, you're not impressed? Well, you should be. Gravity scored all these po those points in the first quarter. He left the game early, something to do with babysitting his sister. That summer, Gravity had us believing that no team, nowhere, could beat us. We ruled the blacktop courts in the hillside projects where we lived. We played all day and all night, even after church on Sundays. Some days, we walked, rode bikes, or took the bus so we could go to other courts in other neighborhoods and beat other teams. Our winning streak got longer and longer as the summer was coming to an end, and everyone was looking forward to the best of the best Milwaukee's biggest and baddest pickup basketball tournament. Although we had dreams of winning it one day, we never believed we could. Not until we had gravity. The weekend before the best of the best, we had a team meeting to work out our strategy. In five seconds flat, we agreed our only hope was getting the ball to gravity and letting him do the rest. And sure enough, gravity was amazing. Dribbling behind his back, between his legs, and even off the backboard. Gravity made plays no one had ever seen before. 
He ran the offense like magic, lobbing passes from out of nowhere and leaving us shocked to find the ball in our hands for an easy layup. He was turning every game into a highlight video. Gravity's legend grew from Friday to Saturday as we plowed down one team after another. Thanks to Gravity, we made it all the way to the finals on Sunday. Of course, the East Side Flyers made the finals too, like they had for 10 years in a row. From Park Lawn to West Lawn, Garfield Park to Mayflower Court, the Flyers were the best b-ball players in the whole city. Yusef Spider Woodruff had hands so quick, you'd swear he had eight of them. Their point, go their point guard, Martin the Hawk Overstreet, was only 12 and already being scouted by the pros. And there, then there was Benny the Jet Street. He was the Flyers' one-man fast-break machine. We once watched R Richard Deepwater Brown put away 14 threes in a single half, and their center Lyle the Giant stood six feet seven inches tall. On game day, it seemed the whole city had come to watch. The Flyers formed a circle, piled their hands on top of one another, and said, one, two, three, victory. We were so intimidated, we decided to do the same. So we huddled up on the sideline and said the obvious, one, two, three, gravity. At first, the Flyers matched us point for point. As I went for a layup, Lyle the Giant slapped my shot in the opposite direction and the Jets scored two points with a short jumper. On our next trip down the court, left to right tried to fake a pass to me. But the Spider stole the ball and scoop passed it to the Jet for another jumper that dropped through the net with a swish. The next time we got the ball, Gravity decided to take control. When the Flyers surrounded him on the defense, Gravity zipped a pass to Sky High, who drove to the basket but ran straight into the Hawk. The referee whistled a foul charge against us. By halftime, we were tied 42 to 42 and Gravity was out of breath, exhausted. We needed a different strategy to win. Gravity never talked much. His game did the talking for him. But what he said to us that day not only changed the game, it changed our lives. I can't win this game, Gravity said, but we can. He looked at Liquid and said, man, you flow like water. It's time for you to turn on the tap full blast. Gravity moved to sky high. You have hops like no other guy on the court. Why aren't you flying to the basket? Left to right, with your killer crossover dribble, people can't tell if you're coming or going. And you, too tall, just get in the way. Finally, he focused on me. Now, I never had a nickname, but when Gravity said, I'm gonna call you Butta, you got Flava, so we need you to melt to the background and spread the defense. Something inside of me got unstuck. This time, our team circled up, piled our hands on top of one another, and yelled in unison, one, two, three, team. By tip-off, gravity had us hyped. The Flyers might have well surrounded right, surrendered right then and there. I caught the tip-off, and as I dribbled up the court, I whispered to myself, get out of the way or get served by butter. The flies never knew, Flyers never knew what hit them. For the first time, Sky High, left to right, Liquid, Too Tall, Butta, and of course, Gravity played as one. We confused the Flyers by constantly changing our defense. We ran man-to-man -man coverage, then switched to 2-3-2 zone, and then shifted to our triangle, trapping defense. With less than two minutes left, our shots started falling like a hard summer rain. Suddenly, we were unstoppable, hitting three-pointers, jump hooks, and high-arching arching, fade-away jumpers that made the crowd roar. Our defense shut down their offense for good. When the buzzer, final buzzer sounded, everyone was stunned by the scoreboard. We had beaten the Flyers by 17 points. There was no doubt that Gravity was the most valuable player that, that day, maybe ever. 
but he insisted that we all share the championship trophy, passing it from teammate to teammate. And 25 years later, we still do.